particularly tough for the country on the economic front, with inflation soaring to 30 percent and resources like fuel running low. Gang violence has also skyrocketed, so much so that some streets have become battlefields between police and criminal groups. As Haitians grapple with all of this turmoil, protesters have been calling on the prime minister to resign, saying that he has failed to stop the unrest. On top of all of that scrutiny, the prime minister himself has faced accusations that he was involved in one of the country's most shocking crimes, the assassination of President Jovenel Moise just last year. Mr. Henri denies the allegation and has pledged to bring justice for the president uh, and the country. But so far, many say that that has not happened. Time now for the exchange where we discuss how the country can try to turn things around. Joining me live now is former Haitian Prime Minister Laurent Lemoth. Uh, Laurence, thank you so much uh, for being with us. So um, it is very clear that things in Haiti right now are out of control. There's so much that the country is dealing with and ordinary Haitians are suffering. What does the prime minister need to do to solve the multiple crises that the country is facing? Well, the country is facing a catastrophic security situation. We're almost as a, a quasi-civil war state right now. An incredible um, financial situation. The, the currency has lost over 50% of its value in the past year alone. And the socioeconomic situation, and on top of that, the unsolved murder of the country's president last year and so far nothing has happened there is nobody that has been brought to justice in the mastermind of the uh, of this horrendous assassination so the prime minister was uh, put in by the president for a period of uh you know to organize i would say he had four months to organize elections and to organ and, and, and to put back security but that hasn't happened either um, obviously, people are protesting. They want the prime minister gone. Do you think that the situation Haiti uh, can sort of be solved by a change in leadership? I mean, a lot of these issues are so systemic that they could take years to turn around. And if you were still prime minister, you were prime minister 10 years ago, but if you still had that job today, what would you be doing differently? Well, you have to understand that the mandate of the prime minister is a, is a provisional um, government that's there right now. It's a caretaker government, mm -hmm. basically. So the mandate that he had is, is very clear and it's concise to um, solving the security situation. So putting more resources in the hands of police, putting more equipment, uh, reinforcing the armed forces to allow them to fight some of the gangs, the eight warlords, if you want, that are ruling the streets of Port-au-Prince. And and uh, and putting them out of order, and then or paving the way for orga organization of elections, and and that's basically what he needs to do in order to uh, to to give the seat to an elected, democratically elected by the people, uh, for Haiti to be back in the democracy and the democratic uh, family again. Because right now we're not. You know, just in terms of them, I mean, we're looking at just incredible footage that our, one of our correspondents, Nick Payton Walsh, uh, who traveled to Port-au-Prince and actually was embedded with the police there, was seeing incredible footage of, I'm not sure if you can actually see the screens, but of what it is like on the streets there in Port-au-Prince, just in terms of the fighting between the gangs and the police who are oftentimes outgunned, outnumbered as well. One of the other issues is corruption. How much of the country's resources, resources that it could use, by the way, to tackle this issue, is siphoned off uh, by corruption? Well, I mean, corruption has been an issue in Haiti, um, you know, for, for a while, and it's been an issue in many emerging and developing um, countries. But the, the, the biggest, I would say, pressing issue right now is that the, the economy is in a free fall. Mm -hmm. um, th there is very few, I mean, the, the, the gas stockpiles are, are running empty. The, the situation is that the, the, the currency has, has, you know, has lost half of its value in, in over just one year. And there is a general lack of confidence and, and you know, people are not investing in the economy. There, there is a massive job loss. So it's creating a humanitarian crisis and you start feeling it, or, you know, already by seeing you know people leaving Haiti you know to the coast of the Bahamas to the coast of of the right. US and it's it's you know the situation is 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 exasperating so what are the chances that 
the prime minister will end up being forced out here? Well, th there is a lot of pressure for the prime minister to resign, and there is a lot of pressure for him to just do what he was meant to do, which is, you know, putting the electoral council in place, which he hasn't done, to organize elections and, and give people the, the, the feeling that the country is going towards a vote. Uh, people are saying that there is a lot of insecurity, so the vote cannot happen. But then again, th there has been countries with wars that have had elections. So that's certainly not an excuse for not to hold the vote. And it's already been over 14 months already. And mm -hmm. I think the people are feeling exasperated and, 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 and impatient, you know, to, to see the vote happen. But I don't think a change of government today would, would, would make, would, would change anything. It would just make the transition right. longer and would just delay the people's going to the vote and elect, and elect their own, um, choose their own leader, freely. And and in the meantime, um, as we debate elections, it's the people that continue to suffer. Laurent Lamoth, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you very much. All right, back to our top story in Iraq, where a powerful Iraqi Shia cleric's announcement that he's pulling out of politics.